So there's definitely another personality living inside of Steven and Mark's body. And they just lost all their powers? Oh shit. Hey guys, Law from Cinema Blend, and today we're breaking down episode three of Moon Knight. But before we move forward, just make sure that you are all caught up on the show because it's gonna be full of spoilers today. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications because we're talking about Moon Knight for the rest of the series. Aren't you coming with? Oh, I'll be there. So let's just dive into it. Moon Knight has no more powers. That's a kind of a big deal. Now, at the end of the episode, we see Khonshu imprisoned in a stone totem by the other gods. Right before we see him imprisoned, he gives Steven a mission. When the gods imprison me, tell Mark to free me. Without him, without that suit, it's just the Mark and Steven show. So we're left to assume that these two will have to figure out how to work their differences and to better embody this one body with both their minds to get these tasks done. Now, when we see Mark and Steven being able to cooperate with each other, they're actually a really effective protagonist and hero of this story. Steven's got the brains, Mark's got the mercenary skill set, but together they make one formidable opponent for these enemies. Personally, I'm looking forward to seeing how this show moves forward without the power set. In all of the MCU so far, we haven't really gotten to see our heroes depowered. And now, without these powers, we're missing a lot of that supernatural superhero element of the show that maybe drew people in from the beginning. But in total, we've seen Moon Knight less than 10 minutes of three episodes. So without Khonshu on the brain, these two are gonna have to learn how to work together. But that's about to get a little bit more complicated because it certainly seems like there's a third personality hiding up in there. Steven, what did you do? I swear it wasn't me. Then who was it? Now, you'll recall from the beginning of the episode, when Mark is threatening one of the locals on Harrow's team, there seems to be some confusion as to who was in control of the body when a murder takes place. Now, we all know that Steven is not capable of something like that. He's our sweet baby Steven Grant. Why would he ever do that? Mark, on the other hand, is a little bit murderous, but the fact that he's confused just gives us more evidence to think that maybe there's a third personality living inside of this body. And we happen to think that it could be Jake Lockley, specifically because when Mark comes to, he is sitting inside of a cab. And that could be a really cool reference to Jake Lockley, who is a cab driver in the comic books. Traditionally, we're used to seeing Moon Knight with these multiple personalities, especially Jake, Mark, and Steven. We haven't gotten to even get a glimpse of Jake, but because our two main protagonists don't know who took control of the body in that moment, we have to believe that there's someone else at play here. Now we can make an assumption that Steven or Mark's body decided to split into one more personality to get the mission done. And these references to Jake Lockley just seem to make sense. And clearly whoever this personality is doesn't have any issue with violence. Now you might be thinking maybe it's Conchu who took control of the body. Well, we learned last episode that he can't do a whole much except for blow some dust around. So it has to mean that there's someone else in control here. And with the comic precedent sent for this third personality and the reference to the cab, it kind of seems like Jake Lockley is going to show up soon. I hope you like attention. Now we can't end this video without bringing up Layla. And we're starting to learn a little bit more about her. Now, initially, I was wondering if we could trust her at all. Is she using Steven or why does she hate Mark so much? Well, I'm starting to see a little bit more clearly that there's distrust there because of Mark Spector. Now, if you'll remember in episode two, Harrow's fake cop friends that basically kidnapped Steven, they mentioned that an archeologist died on a dig site that Mark was working on. Then in this episode, we learned Layla's father was an archeologist who was murdered while he was on a dig site. Coincidence? I think not. Those have to be connected somehow. So our assumption is that Mark had something to do with Layla's father's death. No matter what happens, when Layla finds out how Mark was involved with her father's death, there's gotta be some consequences. And I can see it going either in the way that she can't trust Mark for the rest of the series, or maybe she leans into becoming Conchu's next fist of vengeance, because she certainly will be a little bit more vengeful at that point. It could be a perfect match. And that's assuming they could get the powers back in the first place. Good luck, Steven. And Mark. And Jake? Cheers, thanks a lot. 
Just wrapping it up, this episode was kind of a thrill ride. We got to see a lot of Moon Knight action, we saw some Mr. Knight action, we even saw a fight scene where they're kind of interchanging, which is something that I've been really interested to see how they pull off. That said though, if Jake Lockley is a third personality, does this mean we're gonna get a third version of the Moon Knight costume? You know, like Mr. Knight seemingly is Stephen Grant. Moon Knight seemingly is Mark Spector. If Jake Lockley exists, what does his costume look like? I gotta wonder, there's a lot of lore to pull from. Now, I love kind of the Indiana Jones-esque action and adventure to this series, and it seems like this next episode is gonna have to rely heavily on that because there's no more superpowers involved. I also am asking myself, what exactly can the Ennea do? If Khonshu is able to turn back the sky and the stars to the exact date thousands of years ago, I have to imagine Osiris and Hathor have different abilities too that can come into play. We know there's a couple cool easter eggs as well, like Khonshu's Ushbati looks just like it does in the comics. It looks like the statue where Mark's whole origin story takes place. And Mark's alias in the show, Rufino Estrada, well that last name Estrada is actually a quick nod to Oscar Isaac's real last name. Now clearly this show is packing a lot in, and there's a lot of lore that they want to honor, and I think they're doing a really good job of it. I personally am loving every single minute of this show. Now, make sure that you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on because we are going to be discussing the rest of this series on Cinnable Buns YouTube and you don't want to miss out. Let us know what your fan theories are, what you think of this video, and what you hope to see at the end of this series. We want to hear from you. My name's Law with Cinnable Blend, and thanks for watching.